In this lesson, we'll talk about the equation of a hyperbola. I'd like to start by looking at the graph of this ellipse. And the reason for this is the equation of a hyperbola and an ellipse are going to be pretty close to each other with one minor difference. To start with, we're talking about if you have an equation like this and you want to find the x and the y intercepts by not using a graph, it's a fairly simple thing to do. For example, if you want the x intercept, you would set y is equal to zero and then solve the remaining equation for x. After multiplying both sides by 4 and taking the square root of both sides, you get two solutions. You get plus or minus 2, which isn't a surprise when you look at the graph because I see a point here and a point here. Likewise, if you want the y-intercept, you would set x equal to 0 and solve the remaining equation for y. And after you take the square root of both sides, you can get two solutions, plus or minus one. Okay, so you get this point here and this point here. Now, what if I took this original equation, x squared over four, and I'll leave it as y squared here is equal to one, but what if I made one small adjustment? What if instead of a plus sign, I put a minus sign here? How will this affect what the equation looks like by making this one minor change. You know, one thing to check out is, well, maybe I can find the x and y intercepts and then reason out what the rest of the equation looks like. So let's see what happens there. Like if you want the x intercepts, you would still let y equal zero. And when you solve the remaining equation, you still get x squared over four is equal to one. And so you actually end up with the same solutions that x is equal to plus or minus two. That's this spot and this spot. So that actually didn't change. By putting a minus here, you still get the same x-intercept, no problem. But what if you solve for the y-intercepts? And to do that, you would let x equal 0. Well, what would happen there? The remaining equation is negative y squared is equal to 1. And here we're going to have a problem. Because if you, let's say, divide both sides by negative 1, and then take the square root of both sides, you do get y on the left, but you get plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Now this is the real xy plane, but this is an imaginary number. And that means, well, you can't graph this point over here. In fact, um, if you type this into your calculator, it'll probably say like, you know, something like error. And what this means is, well, there are no y-intercepts on this equation. By changing this from a plus to a minus, you've eliminated this part of the graph. I investigated this a little bit further. So like I took this equation and I solved it for y. When I did that, I got y was equal to, you have to take a square root so you get a plus minus the square root of x squared over four minus one. So you get two solutions. You get a positive square root of this function and a negative square root of this function. When I graph those things, if you start with the positive square root, you get a graph that kind of looks like this. So the graph like does not exist between negative 2 and positive 2. And the reason for that is the thing under the square root here is negative. But this is 0 or positive if you're greater than 2 or less than negative 2. When I graph the negative solution, I got this. So this one little change made the graph of this thing look very different. So you don't get one connected piece like this. You have a piece over here that goes like this and a mirror image of it on the other side. There were only x-intercepts and no y-intercepts. So let's look more carefully at this and talk about the standard form of the equation of the hyperbola. The standard form for the equation of a hyperbola is, you know, again, very similar to that of the ellipse, like it'll have the same form. But here, the difference is there's a negative instead of a plus sign. And the result that you get is, so like here is the x axis, and this is the y axis. But what happens is, when you try to find values that are between here and here, none exist because you'll have some type of a negative square root if you try to solve for y. And the reason that you get pieces over here is because you have a positive square root 
and a negative square root of your equation. We can actually label more stuff on this uh, graph based off the values that appear in here. Like for example, if you want to find the x-intercept, which is this spot and this spot, this part would be zero. And when you solve for x, you get that this point here is at x is equal to negative a, and this point here is at x is equal to positive a. So these are your vertices for this equation. Now you also do have these things called foci. So there are still foci, but they're at different locations. There's a point here and a point here. If we want to find the value of these foci, we can use the following equation. If I call this x coordinate c, and therefore this one is negative c, the equation for the foci is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So this is different. For an ellipse, it was the difference of these two values, and here it is actually the sum. There isn't too much more to define off of this equation for the hyperbola. Uh, maybe just a couple of things to note are the center is still at the point 0, 0, so I'll just note that this thing is still centered at 0, 0. And another term is this is the x-axis, but the axis that contains the foci, we call this the transverse axis. So here, this is the standard form for the equation of a hyperbola. This minus sign means, well, you have two separate pieces for your graph. There's like nothing here in the middle that's actually on the equation. There are still foci. One is located here and one is located here. And because this value is a squared in the denominator, we solve for x, you get two x-intercepts at negative a and positive a. Of course, this situation could be reversed. Um, in the previous slide, the negative was attached to the y-squared term, but you could have that the negative was attached to the x-squared term. The only difference that will be here is, instead of having x-intercepts, you will have y-intercepts. So that is, you get a y-intercept here and here, and because the value below the y-squared term is a-squared, you now get that, well, this y-value is positive a, and this y value is negative a. So here, because the negative is in front of the x squared term, you get a split in the graph like this. And that's because there are no x intercepts. So again, here we have the x axis, and this is the y axis. Based on this equation, the center is still at the point 0, 0. And the foci they're no longer on the x-axis, but now they are on the y-axis. But the way I have the equation written, if I call this y-coordinate c and this one negative c, the way to find the foci is by using the equation c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So it's the same equation as in the last slide. That's because the a squared term is now under the y squared term instead of the x squared term. So I guess one other thing to point out is, in this case, the transverse axis is the same as the y axis. And that's it. Let's find the vertices and foci for the following hyperbola. So this is x squared over 1. Don't really have to have that 1 written here. Uh, minus y squared over 36. Like, what does this equation look like? So for starters, if you're thinking of graphing this thing, or like just having a picture in your mind of what this looks like, because the negative is attached to the y squared term, I know my hyperbola is not going to look like this. There are no y intercepts, but we do have x intercepts. So I don't have like a perfect picture of the graph, but I know it's going to look something like this. So has to have x-intercepts because it's a positive coefficient in front of the x-squared part. So that also means that the foci are on the transverse axis, which is the x-axis. So I'm expecting a graph to, you know, resemble something like this. Now for this problem, the way it is written, here a-squared is equal to 1, 
and b squared is equal to 36. And when you solve for a and b, well, a is still equal to 1, and b is equal to 6. Now, b, in this case, does not translate into an intercept, but this number does. This a equals 1 can tell us the location of the vertices. Okay, so it's going 1 in this direction and 1 in that direction from the center. So here, this point is at positive 1, and this point is at negative 1. So the vertices for this hyperbola are the points, let's see, that is negative 1, 0, and also positive 1, 0. Now, what about the location of the foci? The equation that we can use to solve for this is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And here's a squared and b squared. So I have c squared is equal to 1 plus 36, which is 37. So if we want to solve for c by taking the square root of both sides, c is equal to the positive square root of 37, which I believe cannot be reduced. But that means from the center, you go over to positive the square root of 37, so that is here, but also to negative the square root of 37. So there are two foci for this equation. The foci are at negative root 37 comma 0 and also positive root 37 comma 0. So I have an idea of what the graph looks like, but for this question, just you know, where are the vertices and where are the foci, and they're at these coordinates. I also graphed this equation in Desmos just to see if I had a correct idea of what the graph looks like. Um, so from the previous problem, again, the equation was x squared over 1 squared minus y squared over, well, really 6 squared, which was 36, is equal to 1. And our vertices were here and here, so that appears to be at negative 1 and positive 1. Now the foci had x-coordinates of negative the square root of 37, and positive the square root of 37. So I found those as well, and I plotted them. They appear in green. They appear to be like a little bit past 6 and negative 6. So if I type in the square root of 37, yeah, I mean, that seems pretty accurate. In my calculator, the square root of 37 is about 6.08. So that's a little bit past 6, which is the location of this spot. And if I take the negative of it, again, I'm a little bit past negative 6. So everything that we found in the previous slide matches up with the equation that I got off of Desmos. Since we have the graph here, I would actually like to make one observation. It looks like that this equation has two asymptotes. So an asymptote. This is any line that your equation approaches. That just means gets closer and closer to. If you check it out, you could draw a line here, and it looks like the graph is approaching this line, some line that goes through the origin, the center of this. Um, hyperbola. So I'll even like try to sketch this in here. You know, there, there's some linear equation, you know, y is equal to mx plus b, well really just mx, that the graph of the hyperbola gets closer and closer to. And by symmetry, it kind of looks like there's another one really similar to the first, just with a negative slope instead of a positive slope. I wonder if there is some way that we can actually find the equation of such an asymptote for a graph like this. And we will talk about that in a little bit. Let's try this again in example two. Again, that is find the vertices and foci for this hyperbola. Definitely hyperbola because we have this negative in here. Okay, this time I see the negative is attached to the x squared term. So if I'm trying to think about what this looks like, 
there are no x-intercepts. It only has y-intercepts. In fact, there's two. So I'm thinking like the picture should be, you know, something, something like this. And then the foci are going to be on the transverse axis. So, you know, a point here and a point there approximately. Like this is what I see in my mind. Now to actually figure out the vertices, the point here and here, what we can do is look to this number in the denominator. So I'll note that in this problem, a squared is equal to 25 and b squared is equal to 4. So therefore, we get a is 5 and b is equal to 2. It is this number under the y squared term that tells us, okay, we got to go up 5 and down 5. So that is the spot here has a y value of 5. And this spot here is y value of negative 5. This means the vertices are at the points 0, negative 5, and also 0, positive 5. But what about the foci? Where are they located? I'll again use the equation c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, so I know a squared and b squared. That's 25 and 4. So c squared is equal to 29. When we solve for c and take the positive solution, we get that c is equal to the square root of 29. Okay, so this means that's the location of this y-coordinate and the negative of it is this y-coordinate down here. So if we want both of the foci, they're at 0, negative root 29, but also 0, positive the square root of 29. So that is here and here. I again thought it would be good to look at a graph of this thing on Desmos. So this was the equation y squared over 25 minus x squared over 4 was equal to 1. No x-intercepts, only y-intercepts, apparently at 5 and negative 5 for the vertices. And here, the foci is actually pretty close to the actual graph itself. And that was the square root of 29. So if I type that into my calculator, I get 5.39 approximately. And that, that seems about right. Five and a, you know, a little bit more than a third of the way up until you get to six. And same thing down here. It's mirror image down here. So this is the graph of this hyperbola that I got from Desmos. And just like in the previous example where we looked at the graph, uh, this one has an asymptote too. You know, some line that goes to the origin that the graph gets closer and closer to. So, you know, something that looks like this, something that's supposed to go through the origin. And likewise, there's this other one here that it looks like the graph gets closer and closer to. It'll turn out that every hyperbola has two asymptotes that go through the origin. In the two previous examples, um, I did a rough sketch of the hyperbolas and then used the graph to indicate where the foci and vertices are. Uh, is there a better way to actually sketch a graph of a hyperbola, get something a little bit more accurate? And it turns out there is. As I mentioned, hyperbolas have two asymptotes. If you can figure out where they are located, it can make sketching the graph a lot easier. So I'd like to go over that process. So for starters, if you want to graph this equation, it has x-intercepts, but it does not have a y-intercept. So I know your equation you know, looks something kind of like this. So to start with, you know, where are the vertices? They come from the number that's below the x squared term. So here, you know, a squared is equal to 1, b squared is equal to 4. And this means that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2. In terms of finding the vertices, they are at 1, 0, and also negative 1, 0. So that is here and here. This number does give you more information. If you plot these on the y-axis, okay, so you get a point at positive 2 and a point at negative 2. 
what I'm going to do is draw in a box using these intercepts. So this point and this point, they're not actually on the hyperbola, but it's a number that you can still graph kind of like you would any other y-intercept. This point and this point are on the hyperbola. Now, with this box that I've constructed, you can draw a line that goes through this point and this point. So a line going through the origin and this point here and this point here. So I'm going to try doing that. So I have something going through the origin. This is my line. And it goes down like this. Now, what is the slope of this line? The slope of this line is, well, it goes up 2 and over 1. So if you want to know the slope of this equation, it is 2 over 1. In terms of the values from this equation, it's this number divided by this number. So the slope, in this case, is b divided by a, which was 2 over 1. Now, if you draw a line that's going through this point and this point, the only difference, so I'll try to draw that here, the only difference is this thing is like going down instead of up. And that means we have a negative slope instead of a positive slope. So here the slope is equal to negative 2 over 1. And the reason for that is we go down 2 and over 1. These are the equations of the two asymptotes for your hyperbola. 1 is equal to, in this case it was 2x, and the other was y is equal to negative 2x. And the slope came from dividing b by a. If you now want to sketch your hyperbola and get a better sketch, it has to go through this intercept, but at the same time it has to approach both of the asymptotes. So we get a graph that looks something like this. Okay, my sketch isn't like perfect here, but this is the graph that we should see. So by using these two asymptotes, you can get a much better sketch of what your graph looks like. So here's the equation I got when I did this in Desmos, graphing x squared over 1 minus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. So again, the vertices do match up at negative 1 and positive 1. But also, if we go up to 2 and down to negative 2 and create this box, the asymptotes do appear to match up with the equations that we have. Same thing here and here. All right, so let's sketch a graph of this hyperbola. So in this case, we have that, okay, a squared is equal to 16 and therefore a is equal to 4, b squared is equal to 9, and therefore b is equal to 3. If you want to start by graphing the vertices, so uh, the number under the y squared term is going to be 4 after we take the square root, and this tells us how far up and down we go. So there's no x-intercepts, there's only y-intercepts. We get this spot here and this spot here. Here the hash marks are counting by 2, so 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4. Now for b, these are going to be values that are actually not on the graph itself, but here we're going to go 3 to the right and 3 to the left. You know, the box that we're using to help sketch this thing look like this. All right, so the line that I want to draw here it's going through the origin and this corner of the graph and that corner of the graph. So from here to here through the origin. 
This one's kind of tough just because the hash marks don't like work out perfectly. To figure out the slope of this line, you could go over, well actually I think that'll work out perfect, right? You go up four and over three. So for this line, y is equal to, that was we went up four and over three. So in terms of the values this time, y is equal to a over b. So here, if it's y squared that's positive and x squared that has the negative, it'll be a over b instead of b over a. So anyways, just continuing what this line looks like. Let's see, it's something like this and like this. The other line is y is equal to negative 4 thirds. And so we get something that looks like this and something that looks like this. Just like a very basic sketch of those two lines. The hyperbola itself has to go through the vertices, but also approach the asymptotes. So I'm expecting a graph. That wasn't very good. Let me erase that. Something that looks like this. Same idea up here. It approaches both of the asymptotes. So here's a sketch of this graph. So again, I got this from Desmos where I graphed y squared over 16 minus x squared over 9 is equal to 1. And you know this definitely does resemble the graph that we had in the previous slide where the vertices were at 4 and negative 4. We plotted b here at negative 3 and positive 3. You can draw this box in like this. And if you draw in the asymptotes, they seem to match up pretty well with the equation itself. In this last question in example four, I want to find the standard form of the equation for the hyperbola with foci at negative four, zero, four, zero, and vertices negative two, zero, and two, zero. To start with, there are two forms of the equation. Either the negative is with the y squared or it's with the x squared. If you look at the vertices, or really even the foci, since we have x values for the x-intercepts here, I know this equation has to be a positive x squared term and a negative y squared term. This is the only way you could get x-intercepts. See, the y values are 0. But also, the foci fall on the x-axis, which is the transverse axis. All right, so once we know this, uh, we have to solve for both a and b. Now, for starters, I know that a is equal to 2. If you think about what a graph of this looks like, you know, if you try to sketch a graph, so, you know, you got this hyperbola, it looks like this, the vertices are at 2 and negative 2 for the x value, and the foci are here and here. These vertices tell me the value of a, which is 2, so I know a squared is equal to 4. So that tells me what I put into this denominator. The only thing that I don't know is b squared. But we have an equation, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, which allows me to solve for b squared. Because c is equal to 4, I know c squared is equal to 16. What we have is 16 is equal to 4 plus b squared. If you subtract 4 from both sides of your equation, you get that b squared is equal to 12. When I put this information into my equation, I get x squared over 4 minus, make that look better here, x squared over 4 minus y squared over, in this case, b was equal, b squared is equal to 12, and we get 1. This is the standard form for the equation of this hyperbola.